Mm -hmm. Okay, hi, I'm Hadi Kazemi from uh, West Virginia University, and now I'm uh, going to talk about our paper, Facial Attributes Guided Deep Sketch to Photos uh, Synthesis. So the problem that we are going to address in this paper is uh, design an automatic face sketch photosynthesis algorithm condition on some soft biometrics uh, such as uh, the skin color or, or hair color. So it has many different applications, especially for law enforcement, and um, we already mostly focus on the law enforcement applications. So in law enforcement, they are uh, generally interested in um, identifying a person given a hand around a sketch. So uh, what they do is that they um, they try to retrieve a photo of the suspect in their gallery of mugshots uh, based on the given hand around a sketch, but uh, that's not the case most of the time because we do not have the photo in our gallery. So what they do is that they actually distribute the sketch to the public to identify the person, uh, but uh, clearly it's very easier to identify or recognize a person given a photo than a hand around sketch because there's a huge difference between these two modalities, uh, especially the missing information about uh, soft biometrics such as the skin color, eye color, hair color, or even ethnicity or gender. So there are different many techniques proposed in the literature to address this problem. They propose different techniques to synthesize a photo given a hand around sketch, but there is a still a missing uh, key part here, and it's conditioning this process on uh, soft biometrics or facial attributes. And that's what we are going to uh, propose in this paper. So among all of these uh, techniques in the literature for uh, image uh, generation or image synthesis, uh, those that are based on the uh, content, uh, concept of deep convolutional network, neural networks, they are the most successful one and we are going to follow the same approach. So we are uh, talking about deep convolutional neural networks and image generation tags, so we are in fact uh, talking about autoencoders. So how we can train this autoencoder for our applications? Uh, I'm going to go over our, uh, uh, how we can train this network uh, step by step. So traditionally we used um, Euclidean based uh, metrics to train an autoencoder for image generation, but uh, it's uh, recently proved that um, L1 and L2 norm, they cannot capture high frequency information. They are just encourages, encourage the low frequencies. So the output of this autoencoder is going to be Bellary. How we can solve that, uh, the solution is using generative adversarial networks or GAN. So what is GAN? The, in GAN, we have two different, uh, two separate networks. The first network is the autoencoder that we are going to train it for image generation tests. But in this context, we call it generator. And the second network is a discriminator, which is uh, part of our training only. And what's the purpose of that? The purpose is to, uh, in, in fact, the discriminator uh, is learning to distinguish between some real photos from a real data set and um, the generated images by the generator. So in fact, it's a binary classifier and it's trying to classify images into fake and real images. Uh, at the same time that uh, this committer is uh, learning uh, to distinguish between these two images, the generator is also trying to fool the discriminator by maximizing the classification loss of the discriminator. How it can do that? By making more realistic photos. And that's the whole concept of the uh, GAN. So in GAN, uh, at least uh, the GAN, uh, we have different variants of GAN, the GAN that I'm talking about here. Uh, for generation of, uh, for image synthesis. Uh, we have an L1 norm uh, as a loss between the synthesized image and the ground truth of the um, given hand around the sketch uh, to capture high, low frequency information. And also we have this uh, GAN loss, which is the classification loss of the discriminator. Uh, so the discriminator is trying to minimize this GAN loss and the uh, generator is trying to maximize it. Okay, so problem is solved, not for our case because, uh, because of another issue that we have, and it's uh, geometrical mismatching. If you look at the uh, first row, you can see some uh, uh, hand drawn sketches. The second row, the corresponding ground truth photos. Uh, by geometrical mismatching, uh, I mean if you put a hand drawn sketch and its corresponding ground truth on each other, the edges are not going to overlap on each other. Uh, so the network, the generator in the training phase, is kind of confused how to move these edges. And finally, if you train again on this data set, the output is going to be like the last row. 
um, too much of artifacts and the, you know, the distorted images. How we can solve that? We need an approach that led us to train the network in an unpaired fashion. And hopefully there is another, another variant of GAN called CycleGAN that can handle unpaired training of uh, a generator. So the whole idea in CycleGAN is that uh, instead of ap uh, applying L1 norm between the synthesized image and its corresponding uh, ground truths, what we do is that we reconstruct input, which was the hand-down sketch, from the synthesized image and then apply the L1 norm between the uh, reconstructed input and its input. So there is no L1 between uh, L1 norm between the synthesized image and its ground truths. Uh, it's an unpaired, and therefore we don't need to be worried about geometrical mismatching here. So uh, if you look at the uh, top diagram, uh, everything is kind of the same as the GAN, but uh, when we pass a hand-drawn sketch to the generator, the first generator here, G-Photo, uh, it synthesized the photo for us. Uh, we have the same discriminator here. Uh, it's supposed to learn to distinguish between the generated image and some real images. And uh, then instead of the L1 norm, applying the L1 norm here between the synthesized image and its ground truth, what we do is that we pass the synthesized image to another generator, and it's supposed to reconstruct the input or synthesize the hand around the sketch for us, and it's here. Now we can apply L1 norm between the reconstructed input and its ground truth. So uh, if you look at it carefully, we can see that we can do actually the reverse as well. We can this time start with this uh, exactly the same. The second generator here, we can start with that. So we can pass a real photo to this uh, uh, generator. It synthesized a hand around sketch for us. We have another discriminator, the second discriminator, which actually is trying to uh, distinguish between hand around sketches and uh, uh, synthesized hand around sketches. And now we can pass the synthesized hand around sketch to the exactly the first generator here is, uh, this is the same as this, and it actually reconstructs the input, which was uh, a photo. And now we can apply an L1 norm between the, uh, the reconstructed input and the real input. That's the whole idea in CycleGAN, but uh, still we cannot condition this process on soft biometrics, and that's what uh, that's where actually the contribution of our paper is. So to condition CycleGAN, we actually uh, propose a new version of uh, CycleGAN, we call it conditional CycleGAN. And the whole idea is that uh, we add another discriminator, we call it auxiliary discriminator to the network. The, the whole process is almost the same. So we start with a hand around the sketch here, we pass it to the first generator and it synthesizes an image for us. Uh, before that, in CycleGAN, we pass it just to a uh, discriminator to check if, how realistic is this synthesized image. But we have the same discriminator here, but we also have another auxiliary discriminator. So what's the purpose of that? This auxiliary discriminator, what it sees is a pair of, actually a photo and a set of attributes. And it's trying to check if this set of attributes uh, belongs to this given photo or not. So what, uh, how we train this discriminator, we have three different pairs. So this, in the first pair, the discriminator, auxiliary discriminator sees a photo, a realistic photo, and it's ground through set of attributes. And it's supposed to classify it as a, a true pair. The second, in the second time, it sees this exact same photo, but this time with a random set of attributes that are not that uh, does not belong to this person. So the discriminator, auxiliary discriminator, is supposed to classify it as a false pair. And using these two pairs, actually, the discriminator can learn the relation between photos and the attributes. And finally, the last pair is uh, the synthesized image and our uh, desired attributes that we are actually given to the generator to consider it in its generation uh, process. And the discriminator, auxiliary discriminator, is uh, supposed to again say that this is a false pair. However, the generator is uh, not only trying to fool the previous discriminator, but also the auxiliary discriminator. And how it can 
actually fool the auxiliary discriminator by considering this given set of attributes in its, in its generation process. Uh, so if the given set of attributes here to the generator are present in the synthesized image, the, disc the auxiliary discriminator cannot distinguish between the synthesized image and the, its desired attributes and a photo, a real photo, and its ground truth attributes. That's the whole idea in conditional cycle again. Uh, so how we can input uh, attributes to the network, to the generator or uh, auxiliary discriminator. For the generator, okay. Sorry, okay, here. The generator actually is the autoencoder. So what we do is that we just uh, concatenate the attributes with high level information, uh, high level features in the middle of the uh, autoencoder. And for the discriminator, what we do is that we, uh, for each attribute, we repeat, create a matrix at the, with the same size at the input and repeat the attribute to that size. And then concatenate it with the uh, given, uh, given photo and pass it to the discriminator, auxiliary discriminator. Here you can see the architecture of uh, our generator at the top and our discriminator is kind of the same as uh, CycleGAN, but the size of input and feature maps are a little bit modified. To check the performance of our proposed algorithm, we uh, conducted two different experiments. The first experiment is on third sketch data set Fred sketch data set and some photos from uh, WVU multimodal data set. And we selected just a skin color because the WV uh, multimodal data set is not um, uh, labeled. We just label it by hand. So it was hard to label different uh, set of attributes. So just we selected a skin color uh, for this uh, experiment uh, to actually manipulate in our generation. And the second experiment is on celebrate data set. Uh, we don't have uh, sketches for this data set, so we created uh, some synthetic sketch data set from the celebrate data set by applying X dog filter on the photos. And we selected this set of attributes to manipulate in our generation, uh, generation process. Um, black hair, brown hair, blonde hair, gray hair, pale skin, and gender. So in here, in this slide, you can see the results on the first experiment, the first data set on our uh, WV multimodal data set. Uh, the first column is a handle on sketch, and the uh, second is for uh, white skin, then brown skin, and then black skin. And here uh, is the results for uh, the second experiment on celebrate data set. Uh, this first column is the ground truth. The second is the synthetic sketch we created by applying uh, extract filter. And then you can see the results for different, uh, different combination of attributes. Uh, these uh, red boxes show the generated image by the exact same set of attributes at the ground truth. Uh, we also evaluated the synthesized images using a, a face verifier. It's a VGG16 face verifier pre-trained on uh, CME multiply data set, and we compared our uh, uh, we compared the results with uh, the cycle GAN, the general cycle GAN, the C cycle GAN is our uh, conditional cycle GAN. So we actually per, uh, perform a phase verification uh, between uh, after actually what we did is that we synthesized images using the sketches once with cycle GAN and then with our proposed conditional cycle GAN and then we perform um, phase verification and here you can see the results of the rank one accuracy. We have about 4% uh, improvement in the results of the uh, this phase verification. That's uh, because of considering the attributes in our process. And uh, that's it. Thank you. All right, are there any questions? Terry? 
So uh, two, two questions, one is maybe a comment, but right, when you did the XDOG, right, XDOG doesn't have a displacement between the edges, right? right? So when you're doing the evaluation, one of the key elements you're trying to argue for isn't there because you didn't do any distortions. XDOG's edges will line up with the edges very well. Um, so I'm, not, I'm curious why you, you just use XDOG for your sketches. Uh, okay, because we don't, I, actually we don't have, uh, a B, we, we needed a big sketch data set to train. Oh, in, I understand uh, that, with the same, I, I know, but with the same time as the uh, cell photo data set. But what we are doing here is that we are training in unpaired fashion. So it doesn't matter that if this, these sketches are matched on each other or not. The argue that I had in the very beginning, it was that we cannot use uh, GAN for our purpose because of this geometrical mismatching. So if we, we are using cycle again, it's unpaired fashion, so uh, they're not discriminator, not generator, they never, sees, they never see the uh, sketch and its ground rules at the same time. So it doesn't matter if they are matched on each other or not. That's yeah. Then the second question, so you use VGG like trained on multi-pi or, or something odd, yes. why not just use VGG face out of the box? Uh, Actually, we are doing many uh, face verification in our lab, so we just uh, used the one that we had in our lab. That's the reason. Actually, it's first trained, I think, on uh, Cassia and then trained on CME Multiply, this uh, VGG 16. All right, I think for the sake of time, we're just going to keep on rolling. So if you want to thank the speaker,